do you think uh, that ISIS will try to expand or try to take over uh, North and Eastern Africa? Uh, they want to spread. Uh, their their f motto is that they're persisting and they are spreading. Uh, they want to expand. They, they claim that they're creating a caliphate, a caliphate for all Muslims all over the world. Uh, they see themselves as uh, is the Islamic State is the core of a uh, messianic apocalyptic process that will bring on the end of the world to return the Mahdi, the Messiah figure, who will usher in a, a eternal period of justice and peace and, and goodwill on earth, which is also an Abrahamic a Jewish and Christian uh, theology has the same idea. They all borrow from, e from each other. Um, and they see the Islamic State as just the beginning of, a, of an expanding process. I think they're delusional, and most Muslims think they're delusional. They're criminals. Uh, but they have been able to attract enough people to hold this little piece of land. But they will be defeated very quickly. I, I don't have any uh, doubt that they will be defeated, and they can be easily defeated once you get the local people on the ground with the foreign armies working together, which hasn't happened. Why it hasn't happened is actually the question we should be asking. Why is it that the Arab countries and Turkey and Iran have not worked together more uh, effectively to defeat them? Is it incompetence? Is it collusion? Is it that they see it, maybe it's in their interest? Assad certainly sees it in his interest to uh, allow ISIS to grow. He let out a lot of people from prison who then went into the leadership of ISIS. Uh, why are the r local countries not working together? This is the, the, the big question. And these are local countries that are client states of the United States, most of them. Uh, so there are some serious uh, questions that countries in the region, as well as abroad, uh, these questions have to be uh, answered. Uh, but they want to expand, but I don't think they will. They have small little affiliate groups that have set up shop. But where do they set up shop? Only where there's chaos and, and zones of ungovernability. Uh, Mali, Yemen, Pakistan border, Syria and Iraq after the war, uh, isolated areas of northeast Lebanon. Only when there's warfare, chaos, no government, no order, that's when they move in and set up shop. And why do they do that? Because they go to the people here in those areas and say, we're going to bring you order. We're going to bring you bakeries that are open every day. We're going to create jobs. We're going to create stability and justice. And, and desperate people buy this message. So this is predominantly not a religious movement. It is predominantly a political movement, a crude, e uh, evil political movement, but a political movement that uses religious vocabulary uh, to push its case. There, are, there is a core of ISIS members who are devout Muslims. I have no doubt about that. They really are devout Muslims. They honestly believe they're creating the, the uh, perfect Islamic society of justice and brotherhood and peace, etc. cetera. Um, but the vast majority of ISIS supporters are not driven by theological righteousness. Uh, they're driven by a whole range of material uh, and practical uh, issues, resentments, political uh, revenge, and, and a craving for what they don't have, security, order, justice, predictability, water every day, electricity every day, jobs, education for their kids, hospital care, um, an opportunity to, to develop their society according to their values, all of the things that people do not have in their lives in, in, most, in many Arab countries, not most. Uh, they, they, in desperation, they see this as being offered by, by the Islamic State. And the few nutcases who come from Belgium and the United States and Canada and, and Germany who go to join the Islamic States, these are psychologically disturbed people who would have in other uh, times joined a cult or a motorcycle gang, but they now go and join the Islamic State. Uh, seriously, this is, I mean, uh, if I was leading a country, I would not want these people coming from overseas to join my country. These are people who have real problems and they find escape. The, the, pr the, the cruel irony of the Islamic State is that it offers itself and is perceived by many desperate people to be an answer to all their problems, to be heaven on earth, 
to be a perfect society. And you not only go live in the Islamic State and, and start a new life, you take on a new name. Uh, 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 the, all of the, the people who go to join ISIS, uh, they, 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 call, they have new names, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, Abu this, Abu that, and uh, they, they take on a new name to signify they've got a new life. They can start over again. Many of them, most of them are escaping severe problems, severe stresses. Some of the people come from the West are running away from the police or uh, family problems, or they're loners who have no friends and, no, and they're bullied and they go to the Islamic State, they become Muslims and life is perfect. So these are, these are credible reasons. I'm not saying that these are all uh, unrealistic reasons. For the people who go do this, they are starting life over again, and it's very appealing. So the issue is not what is ISIS. The issue is why are conditions so difficult in prevailing Arab societies? And some Western societies where Muslims are not assimilated or abused or whatever, and we see the response, look at the governors in the U.S. saying we don't want any Muslims, we don't want any refugees. Why are these conditions allowed to get so bad that something like the Islamic State is the response. Mm -hmm.